This one's often considered the Empire Strikes Back of zombie movies. It's rare for a horror film, much less a zombie movie, to have such an epic feel, but for a sequel to an already classic flick, you really couldn't expect anything less. If you thought Night of the Living Dead was brutal for its time, just check this one out. Dawn of the Dead probably wasn't as shocking when it came out ten years later, in 1978. A lot of that had to do with the time period. Because we were just coming out of the Vietnam era, a lot of movies in the 70s, especially with horror, displayed a gritty realism that forced audiences to face gore and violence head-on. Films like Wes Craven's Last House on the Left and Tobe Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre played a big part in that. So while Dawn of the Dead didn't offer as realistic of an experience, what we got was still a fun, gory roller coaster ride that pretty much keeps moving from start to finish. It's a balls to the wall thrill fest. Heads are getting blown off, rednecks are going trigger happy in the fields, a biker gang starts to join in on the rebellion toward the end, and all while this is happening, the zombies take over a large uninhabited mall, continuing to do what they did in life consuming. That's the central theme of this film, America's constant need to consume everything in its path, not to mention that the lives most of us lead are strictly composed of needless routine. Even in death, the zombies attempt to roam the mall in search of pointless consumption, once again slapping us with the harsh truth. Now, aside from its literal qualities, it's still just a fun zombie film, and if you don't look too much into it, it could come across as a live-action graphic novel, as most of Romero's zombie flicks do. The fact that this one had a larger budget and was shot in color doesn't detract from the pretty documentary feel of the original. If anything, it's just as effective, and for the time, having a zombie movie constrained to a mall was an interesting idea. I do have a few gripes about this one. First, it seems long for a zombie movie. Even for something as large in scope, two hours seems a little long for this type of film, and that's not including the extended version, which runs an extra half hour. Also, the characters aren't quite as iconic as the heroes in the original. In a movie like this, you don't necessarily expect the characters to jump out at you, but at least part of the time it seems like we're rooting for the zombies. When the biker gang shows up towards the tail end of the film, we care more about them than any of the central characters, and the bikers are more brutal than anyone else. And because of the music, the clothing, and the hairstyles, it's pretty obvious what decade this came from. I would say that, whereas Night of the Living Dead feels pretty timeless, the same can't be said for its sequel, which screams out 1970s. These are simply minor annoyances, and while it isn't as great of a film as some critics make it out to be, it's satisfying as hell, and a worthy sequel to its black-and-white counterpart. Then we have the 2004 remake of the same name, directed by Zack Schneider, who went on to direct 300 and Watchmen. It was written by James Gunn, who, prior to Dawn of the Dead, wrote both Scooby-Doo movies as well as, get this, Tromeo and Juliet. That's right, a successful Hollywood writer actually wrote the screenplay for a trauma movie. Moving on. The remake is one of those movies fans of the Romero version would expect to hate. The biggest complaint amongst fans is that in this version, the zombies run, which Romero, like many of his fans, has always debated, saying that the dead can't run because their ankles would break. This is debatable at best. There's always going to be a certain creep factor that comes with zombies that creep up on you versus zombies that can run after you full sprint. But realistically, if we ever were in a zombie apocalypse and zombies could only stumble ever so slowly towards you, as long as you have a good set of lungs and you're not crippled, you stand a halfway decent chance. In today's zombie films especially, it seems this is becoming more common, but it still seems to be a matter of preference type of thing. Some people love it when they run, and those that don't make films where they slowly stalk after their prey. The story essentially rehashes the original. The character roles are different, but the cast is just as generic, and eventually they all wind up in a mall. It's entertaining, there's no doubt about it, but it doesn't have the charm of its predecessor. Like the Night of the Living Dead remake, it has a more polished quality that detracts from the grittiness, which usually happens with the big-budget Hollywood remake of a low-budget film. It has its share of scares, too, like the guy on the rooftop who eventually turns into a zombie. Throughout the duration of the film, we get to see his slow transgression until we see him go completely mad. For this one, I'd have to go with the original George Romero flick, because it tries to accomplish so much. It tells a story and feels like an event, which is more than can be said for the big-budget Hollywood remake, which feels like just your typical zombie apocalypse flick. The original has everything, from Tom Zavini's brutal effects work to a compelling narrative, and some haunting moments. If you want a truly badass zombie movie and you've already seen every episode of The Walking Dead, this is one you have to see. 